guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. In that light, I'm always interviewing thought leaders, influencers, creatives on the cutting edge, getting those insights, dissecting through conversation and sharing it with the audience. So today we have uh, J.R. Rivera, and um, he's actually going to be, I'm actually really interested in this conversation. It's going to be talking about building a culture of extreme ownership. I believe there's a book on that, Purpose, Fulfillment, Oh, Power of Relationship Capital, and it's going to be all about, it's going to be a great conversation. So uh, I'll welcome JR to the show, and we'll get right into it. Welcome. Dr. Lou, thank you for having me on the show. Can't wait to dive in. Yeah, uh, we met through Podmatch, and um, you know you have quite an inspiring story. Tell us how you got started, and we'll go from there. Uh, well, I mean, where I got started isn't where I am today. Thank goodness for that, but... Uh, I grew up, uh, my parents told me that I needed to get a trade, uh, so I'd always have something to fall back on, and uh, I did exactly as I was told. I became an electrician. I did that for nine years and realized I wasn't happy and I wasn't satisfied, and I didn't have much of an education. Uh, I didn't have much going for me. Uh, What I did have was some infomercials on how to buy real estate, no money down, (laughs) so so I learned how to do that because I figured that was the path to freedom, real estate. And I know a lot of your listeners get down on real estate, real estate syndication and and all that. So that was my way out of the rat race. And I invested money. I raised money. I lost money and, and rebuilt it again. Uh, so nowadays we have a, a small real estate portfolio uh, and we also have our agency uh, internet business uh, so we have multiple cash flows. Yeah, very interesting story. And um, what's interesting is that um, you know today's going to be talk a bit talking all about accountability. And so you talk about um, this uh, building a culture of extreme ownership. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of Jocko Willink, and the book is Extreme Ownership. I remember when I first found that book, I read it in the first year about eight times. Then I got a Cliff Notes version, gave it to my wife because her and I are partners in this business, in all of our businesses. And then I actually spread it out to our team and and pass it on to everybody. And I love the idea of leading up the chain, leading down the chain, uh, me as the leader, uh, giving mission intent, but allowing everybody on the team to find their way there and map the journey as long as everybody stays accountable for what they are doing and making sure that we're all moving in the same direction. I think it's a it's a fabulous book if you haven't read it. And what I would highly recommend better than the book is grab the audio book because to hear, hear that audio and hear Jocko talking, it takes it to another level. And so, you know, I read that book as well. And, um, you know, I've always <clears throat> been interested in um, Navy SEAL training and just taking the principles from that and applying it to business and, you know, personal life. And um, tell us about um, the power of daily success rituals. I think this is something that uh, they don't teach in school. And if you're not around the right people, you might never hear this. Part of my life is, is my morning routine. And the way I do this is, I get up early. I mean, a lot of people, we've seen it before, like, oh, I don't have time or the day gets away from me. Get up an hour earlier, stop making excuses and start pouring into yourself. So me personally, I've got something I call the morning stack, which is the daily stoic, uh, the daily laws by Robert Greene. What else do I have here? Uh, Zig Ziglar, daily insights with Zig Ziglar, uh, my Bible, a couple other books. And 
I start in the morning with a rosary because I'm a Catholic man, uh, a rosary. Then I go through my morning stack, reading one page of each book, filling my mind with good, positive things. Before I look at the internet, before I look at email, before I scroll Facebook, I'm pouring into myself with good vibes so that I can get ready for the day. And I think that if you want one life hack, get up an hour earlier, pour into yourself good, positive thinking, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be the Bible, but good, positive messages so that you start your day with intention, you start your day with purpose. And what I found for me is when I do that, and then I add exercise to it, when my family gets up, I am in a much, much better mood and I'm able to pay attention to them and serve them because I've already poured into myself. Fascinating. Yeah, I love that um, that uh, hack that you did. And it's actually uh, going to bed earlier and waking up earlier. And um, not only is sleep, do you get eight to 10 hours sleep, but you know, you, you get a psychological advantage too. So, um, you know, I love all of that. The other thing is... Um, this idea where <clears throat> relationship capital, because you know we're all used to financial capital, or you know, tell us about how you we can leverage relationship capital for ourselves to be more come happier and fulfilled. I think this is one of the things that is it's another thing that you don't learn in school. Number one, um, not that I learned much in school, clearly, <laughs> <laughs> but. But it's not something that necessarily they teach you, but uh, people go to good colleges, not just for the education, but they go there for the connection with the right family, with the right people, with the with, with the movers and shakers. And that's one of the things that I, I learned. It took me a little bit longer to learn, but right when I started being an entrepreneur, I noticed that some people were more successful than others, and I gravitated towards the people who were successful because I wanted to learn what they were doing. And I didn't do this in a way where I was just taking, 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 because there's people out there that do that, and that won't last long. I always approached it in a way where I could give. So like my first mentor in real estate, this two-woman team that were just crushing it all the time, always had sales on the board and everything, and I wanted to learn what what are these ladies doing? So I volunteered to help stuff envelopes, to help do some marketing, to go do an open house for them. I started looking at ways that I could pour into them. And inevitably, they poured into me and taught me so much about real estate. And that was when I, I became, that was at the time where I left my blue collar job, became a real estate agent, had no experience, didn't know what I was doing. And I was looking for for answers. And I think that if I could go back to my 20-year-old self and give him a message, it'd be number one, don't be so obnoxious. But number two would be look at the people whom you surround yourself with. And I think it's Jim Rohn who told us we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And so if you want a real hack for, for anything to grow in any area of your life, whether it's faith, whether it's fitness, whether it's finances, Get around the people who are doing the things you want to do and pour into those relationships. Because what I've learned in all these years, like we run a, a freedom business. We are location independent. We can be here or we can be in Utah skiing for a month and we're still running our business. And the only reason this happens is because of the relationships. Number one, the relationships with all the people we know who refer us business. Number two, the relationships that we have with each other inside of our company, looking out for each other, taking care of each other, helping each other. The, the, the most underrated thing there is in the world is relationships and cultivating those relationships so that they grow, so that they prosper, so that they, they bear fruit. And I, I think that's something that is so fortunate that I learned and that we get to do every day our relationships with our clients with our with god with each other it is all we need to hit the next level and the next level and the next level yeah very very fascinating because um like i said we we're all so accustomed to financial capital but there's relationship capital that you talked about there's social uh political you know a lot of different ways of um contributing and i love this idea that you talk about you know proximity is power and um you know pouring you know not just taking but actually like giving you know 
and uh, you know it's kind of like the law of reciprocity and karma you 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 give more and then you know the universe responds so it was really once i heard that it, like my mind shifted it's like oh instead of being a transactional it's like you know you can actually give value serve more and um and the results take care of themselves so yeah it's a cultivation thing you gotta you gotta put the work in and yeah. you will get the rewards but I, I think that any of us can do it is put a little work in and watch what happens yeah um and then you talk about this law of borrowed belief uh, that's this is interesting too i've never heard of that man this is uh this goes back to the the relationships and getting around the right people when I started in business, obviously I didn't have much money. I didn't have much experience. I didn't have any connections and I didn't know what I should be doing. So I found mentors along the way uh, who would help me. And I still to this day, I, I still have mentors. But going back to, to that advice I, I give 20 year old Johnny is like getting around the right people, it, 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 you do it in phases. And so when you're first starting out, it might be a library card and taking out books. Uh, it might be listening to a podcast like the one that you and I are doing today. It, it, after you get some experience and some money, you can invest into programs, into coaching, into conferences. And, and the next layer up, in, in my opinion, is masterminds or peer groups. And that's what I invest in today is getting into the right room with the right people. And what happens when you are in the right room with the right people is that they should all intimidate you. Right? <laughs> if you're in a room where you're you're the, the the biggest deal in the room, you are in the wrong room. So you have to get yourself into a room where you're intimidated by the people in there. Why? Because it helps you grow. It helps stretch you. And if you get into the right room, what happens is those people not only stretch your thinking, stretch what you think is possible, they also see things in you that you may not see in yourself. And the idea of borrowed belief is that even if you have self-doubt, like maybe I, I shouldn't do take down this apartment deal by myself. Maybe I should invest in, in like a, a syndicate or something like that. Or maybe I shouldn't go buy these hundred houses. You have to you have to be in a room where people believe in you more than you believe in yourself and you borrow that belief like if this person thinks i can do it and that person says i can do it then maybe i ought to at least give it a try that that idea of borrow belief i've been using my entire life when when my real estate business went down in flames in 2008 and we lost everything i was at one of the lowest points of my life i just i had that little dip on my shoulder talking about you didn't deserve this you shouldn't be here all that imposter syndrome stuff that any of us deals with at any level i had that and i had to borrow the belief from my wife she looked at me and she's like oh you're gonna do it you, you've done great we we can make a comeback i didn't believe that i was so low i had to borrow her belief so at every stage in my life i've had people around me who I've been able to borrow belief from. And like I said, it starts with the people around you right now. And you can elevate that as you grow and as you can afford to invest. And as you see the bigger picture, get into rooms with people who also have that belief that you can borrow to help you grow. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. It was interesting. It's kind of like leveraging and then um, it's like, it's like leverage or borrowing. And um, the other thing is you talk about, um, reputation or sorry rep, repetition equals reputation that's interesting as well i love reps baby all of all of you know it all of you physicians out there have put in your reps reading books taking tests exams passing your boards all of that you you, you put in your reps and doing your rounds you got to put in your reps and the difference between uh, an average ordinary person and people who live extraordinary lives of limitless possibility putting in the reps when you want to when you don't want to when it feels good when it feels bad we still show up we put in the reps and we continue growing without putting in those reps you will never amount 
or, or never hit hit the 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 person that you should be or 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 hit your potential so you got to put in your reps and i think that's a, a, an integrity thing i think we can all relate to integrity being a, a big thing and if you are not putting in your reps if you are not doing the work you are not living up to your potential and and, and you're not in integrity with who you say you are or who you want to be so yeah i'd say that uh, putting in your reps whether you like it or not it is really going to lead to the reputation that you want today and 10 years from now. Mm, and very interesting. Well, as we come to the uh, almost the end of the conversation, um, you know, you talk about so many different um, key mindsets. And one is um, one thing that really stood out is how, how you talk about how working dumber, not smarter is the key to exponential growth. That's, you know, they say, always say, First thing is they say work hard and then they say work smarter. But now you have a different twist on that, how you say how working dumber is the key. Then I'm curious about that. It's so easy for me, right? <laughs> I barely graduated high school. I mean, that, that's easy for me to work dumber. But uh, yeah, I, I heard all those things too. Work harder. Sure. Work harder. There's only so much work we can do as humans. There's only so many hours in the day. Work smarter. I don't, I, I, and this is going to be a hard one, especially for doctors. And I have doctors in my life. So uh, I get the ego that you have to have to get through all that training, get through all of that uh, schooling and, and get through that. You have to have, uh, you have to have some ego. You have to be smart or else you wouldn't be able to do it. But the smartest thing you can do is realize that you're not the smartest person in the room. And that's why I say, if you're in a room where you're the smartest person, you're in the wrong room. You got to keep finding those rooms where there's people much smarter than you so you can elevate to their level. But in a team framework, the way I look at it is I used to do all that stuff, work smarter, work harder, got me so far. And then I got stuck and hit that plateau. What I realized was working dumb was better. And the way I mean that is hiring team members who are smarter than me, who can do things better than me, who can give me new perspective and being okay with not being the smartest guy in that particular section. I've got an operations person. I've got a marketing person. I've got the copywriting team and I'm okay. I'm good at being the leader and pushing the vision, but these people are smarter than me in their particular skill sets. And so I'm always looking to buy skill. And I don't need to learn everything. It, this is a Dan Sullivan thing. Who, not how. My first question is not, how do we do this? My first question is, who can we get that already knows how to do that? So I can just pay, bring them in. They're the smart ones and I can just be dumb. All I got to do is pay them money. Yeah. Very, um, yeah. That, and ironically, that's the smart way to do things. So it's kind of a uh, reverse. It's like be dumber. But that's actually the smarter. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic. <laughs> but uh, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, so many um, epiphanies and, you know, different ways of looking things. Um, I know you have a website and how can people follow you on social media, reach out to you, contact you? So the only place I really hang out nowadays is LinkedIn. And I am Riverathan, R-I-V-E-R-A-T-H-A-N on LinkedIn. In fact, that's my social handle on all of the platforms. So you find me in one place, you'll find me everywhere. But I, I'm going to encourage our listeners to elevate your environment, get around new thinking, get around people who are doing cool things that maybe you never thought of, or doing bigger things that maybe you aspire to. I invite you to go over to the podcast factory.com the podcastfactory.com and look around there there's a uh, obviously there's navigation on the site look look at our client showcase and there you will find some new friends whom you can follow who can elevate your thinking who can help you reach new levels by giving you new perspective and i think that would be a, an amazing place uh, for you to take your game to the next level yeah Great conversation. Um, be sure for the audience out there, um, JR's resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to follow him on social, especially LinkedIn. He's also got YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, his website as well. Uh, and you can get um, 
a uh, six biggest mistakes to avoid when starting a podcast and um, check out his podcast. And with that, um, learn so much. And thanks for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me, Dr. Lou. It's a pleasure. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week